you know, show me examples of tokenomics on Pulse Chain. I know talk tokenomics is not a real word. <laughs> it's a not an official word, but it'll search the web. It'll kind of combine it, you know, see what information has and meanings and stuff like that. And I'll come up with some pretty interesting examples too. Uh, so it's got here a deflationary mechanism. Uh, it talks about Pulse Chain with uh, the, the 1559, the fee burning. It's got staking. Um, you know, they got fixed supply of tokens and there's all kinds of stuff to go into that. Distribution things, uh, liquidity, different incentives. You got farming tokens, stuff like that. So let's go through it real quick. So as far as, so you got, first of all, staking and mining. Uh, you got hex, you know, Pulse Chain fit in here. You know, you can be a validator, you can stake your uh, PLS to help secure the network, earn fees, uh, all that stuff. Hex, of course, uh, you know, premier yield asset uh, on, on for, for Pulse Chain. You can stake hex, earn more hex, bigger pays better, longer pays better, all that. There's also, you can mint stable coins from, you know, you got liquid loans, Power City, and all the stable coin minting uh, places, uh, platforms where you can take. Uh, you can take your Pulse or take your Pulse X, mint stables. Again, do your research about liquidations, redemptions, all that stuff too. But just in general, you can mint stable coins from that. And you can stake those stable coins and earn uh, other tokens and, and a whole bunch of different uh, uh, yield stuff going on there. So you got staking, you got mining. In the DeFi sense, uh, you have deflationary coins, like for example, Pulse X. Uh, you got the buy and burn. Uh, which I'll talk about buy burn here in a minute, but you know, supply goes down, fixed supply, then token supply goes down. You got, so deflationary versus disinflationary. So uh, disinflationary is when it's not, uh, the supply gets, it basically goes down over time. So um, for example, ink, you could say that if, it, again, there's a bunch of different information floating around on ink, but for what I understand, the supply goes down over time. Uh, the release schedule and stuff, I think Earn also has like a, uh, really schedule over time and stuff for, for power city but you have disinflationary which is different deflationary is supply goes down over time disinflationary is when uh, less of supply comes out uh, over time and it gets reduced and um you know you could have that could be very interesting for tokenomics and stuff too then you got stuff like uh, if you've heard of tax tokens uh, reflection tokens it's like a dividends from transactions type of model where fees uh, you can like hold coins and earn uh, you know, earn earn uh, fees or otherwise for holding coins. If you try to trade, maybe fees are, are taken like a you know smart contract stuff kicks off, and uh, fees go to holders or other pools or LP or OAs stuff like that. So those kind of things. There's you know some people like them, some people don't like them. All kinds of different games to play there. You have like the uh, I was talking to Neil yesterday about the hourglass model, like with P2X, where and it's like a, a modified version, I guess, too, where um, over time, I forget how, so let's just, let's ask, what is, get a better explanation for this, for tokenomics. So, so time bound tokens for mistake assets and DeFi, time like a period, liquidity. Let's see. Yeah, I know there's a time allows market allows you to sell the TBDs of these for the secondary market. Thought there was something. Yeah, maybe there's some lockup period or something, and then you can earn more, but then you can't sell at the same time. I, I forget what it is. Not giving me a super good uh, example on this either. But anyways, there's like certain things like that or modified versions of it. Uh, there are some tokenomics again, the, regardless if you like these or don't like them or think they're, you know, poorly implemented, they can be better implemented, whatever, just kind of go give an overview here of different stuff going on. Then you get farming tokens again, ink fits in here, BBC with nine inch, um, you, you know, you heard people talk about risk monetize, monetizing risk type of thing. Uh, they can be earned through providing LP, staking LP tokens. Uh, then you got, you know, some of these, again, there's a lot, some overlap, some have different ones, different mechanics. Buy burn, famous for that. Um, it goes and uh, buys coins off the market, burns them, reducing supply, uh, buy pressure, all that stuff. That's like the god tier tokenomics. You hear some, you know, people talking about from time to time. And then with the uh, 
what I've been talking about recently too with permable. You get, there's effectively, effectively a double buy and burn. Uh, I've tried to simplify it down to that. I know it's like a compound thing, but uh, where you have, uh, you create tokens with minting with PLS, for example, and GIF, and then you mint a new token. And then um, the PLS and that, or 90% of it goes and buys the uh, PGIF off the market and burns it, reducing reducing supply and has this like type of like, so the, the two buy and burn is user buys it. And then uh, when they use the GIF and PLS to mint the other uh, PGIF, the GIF gets burned. So the buy one and burn one, and then the uh, buy and burn with a smart contract initiated one, user initiated one first, smart contract initiated or second or protocol initiated one goes, takes it, uh, buys off market, burns it, stuff like that. So you have like buy and burn. Now we're seeing like types of like, you know, additional types of buy and burns or double buy and burns or otherwise compoundish things. And then you have just PRC 20s. You just have meme coins or brand coins or, and where people, you know, where the brands give them speculation power and you can do LP management and all kinds of like different, games around that to make it a you know, massage the environment to, you know, hopefully make price go up and sustainable and all this stuff too. So that's just a few different mechanics there. You know, there's, there's tokenomics, there's mechanics, there's, you know, there's like a lot of gray area where they all fit together, but essentially some are long-term games, or I guess when you're deploying them, you can deploy them as long-term games, short-term games, you know, some, some, some of them have people get in early, get rewarded more. You have the whole fair launch thing. Um, you have the sacrifice, like all these different components that kind of build around it too. sacrifices versus fair launch versus, um, mint minting, you have creation, uh, models, uh, versus inflation models where the coins inflate, uh, or you can just create them with economic energy, a bunch of different stuff there. So anyways, just want to give you an overview of the different stuff, pulse chain and other places too. But, um, you know, so when you hear people talking about them, you have some sort of idea of, oh, okay, that's that's like how this type, type of game works. How did they modify it? Did they make it better or worse for, you know, long-term people, short-term people, um, you know, who benefits and why and for how long and all this stuff too. 